Hi, my name is Alice and I'm a current PhD student studying at the University of Queensland. Today I'll be, explore, um, I'll be presenting data from a key focus of my PhD, where I am exploring how trace element partitioning in sector zone clinoproxene is influenced by magma undercooling. Clinoproxene is an early crystallizing mineral and is highly sensitive to changes in magma pressure, temperature and composition, which has allowed for it to be utilized in unraveling magmatic histories and identifying things such as magma recharge events. However, clinoproxene morphology and chemistry is influenced strongly by undercooling conditions. Undercooling is defined as the difference between the liquidus temperature of a mineral and the temperature it actually crystallizes at, and is represented by the equation in the third dot point on the slide. Undercooling can be induced by cooling, degassing, or decompression of magmas, which are processes that often occur during ascents. Undercooling plays a key role in crystallization regimes influencing crystal morphology and chemistry, which in turn influences magma solidification pathways. Therefore, it is key that we understand how undercooling influences crystallization if we are to understand ascent processes. Sector zoning in clinoproxene is illustrated in the figure to the right here, and it's characterized by the presence of silica magnesium rich hourglass sectors, which are shown in blue, and aluminium titanium rich prism sectors, which is shown in white and lie perpendicular to the hourglass sector. The formation of sector zoning is attributed to the degree of undercooling, with the presence of sector zone clinoproxene typically indicating relatively low degrees of undercooling, so less than about 45 degrees. The incorporation of cations in the different zones and sector zone crystals follow, is thought to follow the cation exchange reaction shown in the fourth dot point here. But cations of high charge, such as titanium, are incorporated into the crystal lattice sites to accommodate for the substitution of aluminium for silica in the tetrahedral site, which causes a charge deficit. Trace elements in sector zone crystals from Mount Etna appear to also follow this charge balancing substitution mechanism, where highly charged cations, such as the high field strength elements and rare earth elements, are preferentially partitioned into the prism sectors in order to compensate for the charge loss when aluminium substitutes for silica. However, whether this behaviour changes with undercooling is yet to be determined. So this is where my work comes in. My goals are to investigate how trace element partitioning between sector zone clinoproxene crystals changes as a function of undercooling. So to do this, I've analysed an array of experimental clinoproxenes produced at a range of undercooling conditions. So um, between 23 and 173 degrees of undercooling. These samples were produced by my collaborators in Rome, Italy. To um, obtain trace element data, I made trace element maps using laser ablation ICPMS mapping at the UQ RIF lab. So I found that in the low undercooling experiments, such as this one at 25 degrees of undercooling, clinoproxene is typically euhedral with distinct sector zoning. This is shown in the aluminium map, where you have the aluminium depleted hourglass sector in blue and the aluminium rich prism sectors in red. Lithium, for example, as an example of a low charge cation I analyzed, it doesn't differentiate very strongly between sectors and has a very uniform composition throughout the crystal. In contrast, tantalum strongly partitions between the sectors due to its high charge, which allows it for, for it to be more readily um, incorporated in charge balancing substitutions. As undercooling increases, clinoproxene becomes progressively more skeletal and the type of compositional zoning changes. So this experiment was conducted at 82 degrees of undercooling, and we see that the aluminium zoning in the map on the left here becomes more irregular. This zoning style has been described as consisting of aluminium rich skeletons and aluminium poor overgrowths by one of my collaborators. Similar to the low undercooling conditions, lithium doesn't differentiate between zones, while tantalum does so. And at the highest undercooling experiment, clinoproxene is dendritic with very subtle aluminium zoning, which you can sort of you can see in the map on the left here, where we have these aluminium rich zones in red and aluminium poor in blue. Tantalum does follow this zonation quite closely. However, lithium doesn't again appear to follow this pattern. So these results indicate that despite undercooling increasing, it appears to be that um, the way in which trace elements are incorporated into the crystals remains the same. So I extracted trace element concentrations from the elemental maps and calculate partition coefficients. So on the left, we see that as undercooling increases, the partitioning of aluminium in both aluminium rich and aluminium poor regions increase. In the M1 site, tantalum follows similar behavior. 
In the M2 site, we see that the rare earth elements behave similarly. The heavy rare earths, such as ytterbium, become compatible at very high undercooling conditions. So about just over 100 degrees of undercooling, we see the ytterbium partition coefficients go above one. So it's clear that aluminium plays a key role in the distribution of rare earth elements and high field strength elements. So here are some plots with aluminium and the partitioning co partition coefficients of tantalum um, and the rare earth elements. So we see that as aluminium increases, tantalum partition coefficients increase, which highlights the dependence of the presence of aluminium and the role of charge balancing substitutions. The light rare earth elements behave quite similarly, but the heavy rare earth partition co coefficients, such as ytterbium on the right, appear to stop increasing with aluminium at very high undercooling conditions. Trace element partitioning behaviour in clinoproxene can be described using the lattice strain model, which states that for a cation to enter a lattice site, work has to be done to accommodate the cation. This is shown graphically by the onoma curve, which is at the top right here, where partition coefficients are pl plotted against ionic radii and form a parabola. Three parameters are used to describe partitioning. So we have the ideal radius for a cation that enters the site with no work being done, the ideal radius, R0, E, which is the Young's modulus and describes how willing the site is in accepting cations that deviate from this ideal, and D0, which is the maximum partition coefficient of the ideal cation. So I fitted these parameters to rare earth element partitioning data extracted from the trace element maps. For, um, so in the M2 site, we found that the Young's modulus and the ideal cation radius were found not to vary with undercooling, which indicates that the nature of the lattice site doesn't change. However, the maximum partition coefficient increased with undercooling in both aluminium rich and aluminium poor zones, which you can see in the plots here. This result indicates that as undercooling increases, high concentrations of rare earth elements in the M2 site can be incorporated into the crystal lattice. So to summarize, by analyzing clinoproxene from a range of undercooling conditions, I found that increasing undercooling conditions resulted in high partition coefficients for aluminium, for high field strength elements, and rare earth elements in both aluminium rich and aluminium poor zones. The increase in partition coefficients of these cations with aluminium indicates that highly charged cations are incorporated into the aluminium rich zones by charge balancing substitution mechanisms at all degrees of undercooling. By then looking at the lattice strain parameters of the three plus cations in the M2 site, so the rare earth elements, it was clear that the nature of the lattice site doesn't change with increasing undercooling, while the maximum partition coefficient increases. This supports the idea that the um, incorporation of the trace, highly charged trace elements is, is um, controlled by charge balance substitutions. So work that I have currently have in progress is the development of an undercooling calibration using these results, which I will then be applying to clinoproxene from Mount Etna. Some initial results are based on the relationship between the maximum partition coefficient D0 and undercooling, and are shown in this little plot to the right here, where we see that the phenocrysts, which are here in, which are in that bluish green color, typically record much lower undercooling conditions than the microcrysts, which are there in red. So this tells us that the clinoproxene crystals at Mount Etna record a range of undercooling conditions. And this week we could potentially use in the future to um, ascribe undercooling to different eruptive styles at Etna. Thank you.